Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul J. in Baltimore, and welcome to this edition of the Angler Report with Eve Angler. He now joins us from Ottawa. Eve is a commentator and an author. His most recent book is The Ugly Canadian, Stephen Harper's Foreign Policy. Thank you for joining us again, Eve. Thanks for having me. So the New York Times came out and said, now's the time to say no to the Keystone XL tar sands pipeline. There's been a massive movement in the United States against it. The big protests and personalities coming out trying to stop this pipeline, taking uh, Alberta tar sands oil in, in a pipeline down to Texas. How's all this being received in Canada and, and by, the, you could say, the public and by the Harper government? Well, the Harper government has, uh, uh, is basically freaking out about uh, the possibility that uh, Obama would say no to the pipeline. Uh, they've launched a full-court press in terms of lobbying in the U.S. Uh, for, for the pipeline. Uh, the, John Baird, the foreign affairs minister, just the other day said uh, it's been the number one priority for more than two years for a Canadian team based in Washington at the Canadian embassy there. And, uh, and the, the, there was just access to information documents that came out about, that detailed a little bit about the strategy to, um, to uh, convince U.S. journalists to support the pipeline and um, Canadian officials uh, taking the New York Times journalist out to uh, the you know fancy restaurant you know, paid 129 dollars for you know two people to go out for dinner um so uh the, the aggressiveness of the lobbying campaign is is unprecedented i think in certainly in the history of um, of uh, of uh, recent canadian relations with the u.s uh, to have a, a, go a government uh in this country so aggressively uh basically in uh in a battle political battle with a social movement in the u.s is not uh, not something that I, I think maybe has ever been ever been seen in the history of Canadian U.S. relations. Where the Canadian public is on the matter is is a little bit unclear. Um, but uh, the dominant media is uh, almost overwhelming in their uh, endorsement of of the pipeline. You have the, the the premier from Saskatchewan, from Alberta, repeatedly going down to Washington, lobby on behalf of the pipeline. Um, so you have a strong. Uh, whole political uh, elites really in Canada supporting it but you know that there is significant opposition to the tar sands uh, one of the reasons why they need the pipeline uh, down south is because of so much opposition to the uh, Enbridge pipeline through BC uh, and the Kinder Morgan pipeline through BC there's so much opposition to the tar sands in BC that they uh, they need the southern route um, but uh, it is really an unprecedented uh, political battle by the by the conservative government in favor of this pipeline now, I heard something about a, a potential pipeline that's actually going to go through Toronto. What, what is that about? Yeah, there is a reversal of a pipeline that's currently in place, Line 9, um, and that's uh, before the National Energy Board right now. And that's about getting uh, uh, tar sands oil uh, over to refineries in Montreal and, um, and possibly in the Maritimes, but also... Uh, moving uh, some of that oil down to Portland, Maine, and there's been significant demonstrations in 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 uh, in, uh, in Vermont and in Maine against uh, against the uh, 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 pipeline. And uh, recently, I think actually just last weekend, even there was a um, there were uh, uh, votes, uh, municipal or votes in, in Vermont, where dozens of different municipalities or counties, I guess, uh, in the U.S. Um, uh, expressed overwhelming opposition uh, uh, in these referendums to uh, tar sands oil coming coming through uh, coming through there um, so so they, they, they they're desperate the, the 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 oil companies that are have plans for you know doubling and tripling of, of tar sands extraction over the next couple of decades they uh, are desperate to find outlets uh, for for that oil and you know the geography of Alberta is, is means that it's not so easy to get that oil out and uh, and they're trying all the different uh, all the different methods the preference being obviously this uh, the uh, Keystone XL and taking it to the to the Gulf Coast because the refineries are already there um, uh, it, they already have access to most of the international and, uh, market. apparently the apparently a lot of the, the one of the bigger refineries that can deal with this heavy crude is owned by the Koch brothers they have significant interests I believe they have some interest in the in the pipeline itself even they have some investment in the pipeline itself um, and uh, and they're, the lobbying obviously is is you know really strong at that end, and and one of the things that's interesting about the Canadian lobbying is just how how uh, involved Canadian 
uh, diplomats are with with American oil companies and, and working with the American oil companies and really stoking their lobbying uh, for uh, for the uh, for the pipeline. Uh, it's really uh, an alliance. Canadian government really working in alliance with the most reactionary and um, uh, you know, big oil interests within the U.S. And uh, China's also moved into the tar sands with some oomph, have they not? Well, more than fifteen billion dollar investment. Uh, the the state-owned uh, oil company uh, that the Harbor government approved uh, a few months back. Uh, it was very controversial, the, the, uh, the Chinese investment into, uh, into the tar sands interest and controversial within Canada uh, because of the question of China, not, not controversial because of all the carbon uh, that's emitted from uh, tar sands uh, extraction, but controversial because of you know, the sort of geopolitics of, of China being um, uh, not a country that's fully aligned with the, uh, the Western, uh, Western powers. And just, I guess, just for, as a little bit of background, particularly for American viewers, uh, does Harper completely discount the whole issue of climate change or he pays lip service to it? He pays lip service to it, uh, a bare minimum lip service to it, uh, even after Obama's speech, uh, his inauguration, where he you know, referred to uh, some of the uh, climate disturbances, the Hurricane Sandy and, and other um, uh, disturbances within the U.S. of recent, uh, there were a lot of the commenters noted how you would never hear that from from Harper. Uh, uh, he wouldn't. He doesn't deny climate change. He did until pretty recent before he took office, as late as 2002. Uh, there's an infamous letter he sent that that basically denied climate change. Um, but since he's taken office, that's you know changed officially. But uh, but he certainly downplays it uh, or you know, rarely rarely discusses it goes out of his way to cut uh, funding to scientists, uh, government funded scientists that are investigating the matter and uh, obviously pulled Canada out of the Kyoto Protocol. And, and they've, they've really put uh, their eggs in the tar sands basket. And that's one of the reasons why the, the, the question of, the, of, um, of Keystone XL is so important to them, because if ca currently Canadian uh, or Alberta oil is sold at a quite a significant discount on international uh, markets, about $35 discount from the price of that American oil is selling at. And that's in large part because there is limited uh, access to refining, uh, uh, limited pipeline capacities, and the difficulty of getting it to market. And so they're very nervous that that, that price differential will continue and actually get worse, uh, making the tar sands uh, unviable un, uh, un, un economically. And um, uh, so that's you know, a big part of their, their campaign. They've been, they've been so uh, tied into tar sand interests and, and, and really to the to the detriment of much of the manufacturing sector of the Canadian economy, yeah, the price me, of oil. Let me ask that question. How, how big or how significant is tar, the tar sands in the Canadian economy? Ultimately, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, I don't know exactly GDP proportion, but it's, you know, a couple, couple points of GDP. Uh, it's, it's fairly, fairly small. Uh, in the overall, you know, housing sector would be, you know, uh, up there at the top and uh, manufacturing probably still above it. Um, but the, the price of oil being high and, and, and the reliance on tar sands and all the Canada is one of the few places uh, that has lots of reserves that have completely open to foreign investment. Right. So there's a huge influx of foreign investment into the tar sands. Most most oil comp oil, oil producing countries um, have, you know, national uh, state owned energy companies that uh, that uh, restrict you know foreign foreign ownership but because uh, canada doesn't have that it's you know very sought after obviously by uh, by the big you know foreign uh, uh, multinational oil companies and so that the influx of money at that level has had a real uh, uh, pushing up of the canadian dollar uh, to the detriment of of um, of the canadian manufacturing sector and so there's been some studies recent one that came out just showing how few jobs are actually being created uh, from from the oil sands, uh, from the tar sands sector, and and yet they're they're undermining you know tens of thousands more jobs in the in the manufacturing sector. And there's a, there's a regional component to this. The Conservative Party is is very strong. Their their base is in Alberta, um, and so that's where you know where the tar sands are. So there's a regional component uh, to to that policy and being so strongly. There's you know personal components. Harper has very strong personal ties to the oil sector. If the tar sands collapses economically speaking uh, or even stagnates um, they've put so many of their uh, uh, they've, they've put so much emphasis on that sector that uh, the, the that's really that's very dangerous for for the conservative government uh, 
politically. I think that's one of the reasons why they're so aggressive in their lobbying in the U.S. to get the Keystone XL uh, built. And <clears throat> alongside that is a um, is a, is the fact that this is starting to come back. It's already come back to bite them a little bit. They're pulling out of the Kyoto Protocol. They're a constant criticism of the NDP, the opposition, uh, for for discussing a, a, a carbon tax. Uh, in the context of, Har of Obama's recent declarations about about uh, desire to bring in a carbon tax and and you know uh, concern about uh, climate disturbances, uh, this is their conservative party policy has started to cause them a little bit of trouble uh, politically in, within Canada, and so they've already started changing their rhetoric a little bit uh, because of the protests in the U.S. against the Keystone XL. They've been changing their rhetoric a little bit with regards to to uh, to climate change. Um, it's, I think at this level, it's just a rhetorical thing. Mm. Uh, whether it, it will move to policy, uh, that's sort of a matter right. of you know, where things go in terms of politically. Uh, but uh, but they've been really forced on the defensive. So it's the, an interesting uh, dynamic where you have a social movement in the U.S. that's uh, basically forced a, a minimum rhetorical uh, uh, shift in gears uh, by, uh, by a Canadian government on the question of, uh, of climate change. Right. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.